Basketball Video Games Over the last few decades, we've been treated to many gems. From the high-flying, flashy style of NBA Jam, to trying to capture the rush of college ball, all the way to today's franchise leaders of basketball simulation in NBA 2K17. Basketball games have come quite a way from where they first originated. But instead of showing you some of the most outstanding titles in the sports library, we'll be taking this into a different direction. That's right, today we'll be focusing on the worst basketball associated games. Games that just stuck out for being, well, overall awful. For I bring to you the top 10 worst basketball video games of all time. Number 10. NBA All-Star Challenge released December 1992 for the Super Nintendo, Sega Genesis, and Game Boy. This game has five modes, one-on-one, -on -one, free throws, three-point shootout horse, and one-on-one -on -one tournament. One good thing about the game is at least it had an NBA license, so you had real teams and real players. But for the gameplay, it is absolutely atrocious. When you're walking around on the court, you kind of feel like you're on ice. You'll find yourself jumping around trying to play defense, but it really doesn't seem to have any purpose in the end of it. You will constantly miss wide open shots even with Michael Jordan. I mean, I think this is supposed to be Michael Jordan. Right here, it looks more like a fucking camel. And here on the free throw screen, we see a photo of Carl Malone. Why choose Carl Malone for free throw shooting? You have players like Mitch Richmond or Reggie Miller in this game, but no, the mailman, whatever. For the free throw mode, it is basically shooting free throws. That's it. You're shooting fucking free throws with some stupid cursor moving around. What the hell is this? This mode also serves absolutely no purpose as there is no tournament. You don't play anyone. There's no rivals. You just shoot free throws for the hell of it. I believe this is one of the first games to actually have a horse mode available. The problem with this mode, though, is it's actually horse shit. You're just walking around to spots on the floor and taking shots which will most likely not go in. There's no trick shots behind the back, dunks underneath the legs, no. You're literally just walking around taking shots. Other than the nostalgia factor of being able to play with some of the greatest legends that have ever graced the NBA, this game really won't keep you busy for more than a few minutes, as all it is is really a bunch of trash minigames. Number 9. Up next, we have Super Slam Dunk, known in Japan as Magic Johnson's Super Slam Dunk. This is a game that was released in July 1993 for the Super Nintendo. This game only has two different modes, Exhibition or Playoffs. It's funny because this game is endorsed by Magic Johnson himself, but he's not even in the game. In fact, no NBA players or teams are in this game. Instead, you are left with 28 fictional teams and generic player names like Simon, Jones, and Lane. Before each game, the magic man himself will give you his own pre-game insight on how he thinks it's gonna go. This, I guess, is a pretty good concept, but why does magic look like a dog with peanut butter stuck in its mouth? This might be one of the slowest paced games I've ever played. It's literally like playing in slow motion, like you're trying to run in quicksand. As soon as you cross the half court line, you'll notice the camera spins around the other way. The problem with this is it leaves you confused and sometimes your players will actually teleport on the court. One thing that I will point out that is nice about this game is the use of Chick Hearn's commentary. Slam dunk. There's a personal foul. He shoots from the corner. He takes a 30-footer. He puts up a 20-footer. The only problem with that, though, they only decided to record about seven lines, so the stuff gets repetitive very quickly. For a game that came out in 1993, the graphics weren't that bad, but for the lack of NBA players and just god awfully gameplay, we have to list this as one of the worst basketball games ever. Number 8. Wait, what did he say? 
Dribble, dribble. Dribble, dribble? Double Dribble was originally an arcade game from 1986 that came over to the NES console in 1987. This was the first basketball game that you could play on Nintendo, and it offered 5-on-5 five -five realistic basketball. Well, sort of. The game starts off with an intro that was pretty impressive for its time. We have an 8-bit version of the Star Spangled Banner. But once the fans make it into the arena, the game sorta stinks. There are three teams you can choose from. Los Angeles, New York, or Chicago. And it seems only Chicago's logo somewhat resembles what it would be in the NBA. Instead of the New York Knicks, we have the New York Penguins. As soon as the tip-off happens, the madness begins. Because of Nintendo's limited hardware at the time, most of the players are blinking and flashing on the screen, enough to send an epileptic into a seizure. Also, sometimes when you drove to the net, you got this pretty cool dunk animation. Well, all five frames of it. The main issue with this game is that it was, well, too easy. There were hot spots on the court where you could shoot from and you would never miss a single shot. You can actually go to the same corner every single time and not miss a single shot. You also never really knew which player you were on the floor because every single guy that you see is blinking. And at times this game looked more like an aerobics class than an actual basketball game. But I will give this game credit, it did have a kick-ass halftime show. We got the cheerleaders, they got their pom-poms, we got dance moves, the crowd's getting into it, we got the man dressed up as a giant blue dildo. Wait, what? And now he's being chased by a frog? This game's crazy. Also, I found it quite amusing that when the game ends, it just instantly goes back to the main screen. No recap of the score, no recap of anything. Just... The game was definitely revolutionary as being one of the first basketball games, well, ever. But even in 1987, this game really did not offer much replay value unless you had someone to play with. Because of the awful graphics, the disgusting gameplay, and the ability to cheese, we've listed this as one of the worst basketball games of all time. Number 7. Jam It, released November 1994 for the 3DO, MS-DOS, Sega Genesis, and the version we'll look at today, Super Nintendo. This game doesn't have any NBA athletes in it, instead we get to choose one of three players, Slade, Roxy, or Chill. I sure hope Roxy's wearing a sports bra. The main and I guess only aspect of this game is street ball, one on one street ball. On this screen, it looks like there's multiple modes to play, but it only allows me to select one on one. Maybe you have to unlock the others. The graphics for the game are pretty average for 1994. But by God, the controls are absolutely appalling. The first thing that you'll notice is whenever you try to go for a layup or a dunk, you get sent to this cut scene, which at first seems pretty cool, but then you realize it happens every single time you jump near the basket. Sometimes you'll miss the rim completely. It actually becomes hilarious when you start fighting for the ball. And one of the most annoying things in this game is the basketball post. Yes, the basketball post. And it just doesn't happen here and there. No, this happens all the time. Sometimes even the computer will run into it. And even sometimes both players will run into it at the same time, causing both guys to fall over and the ball just to roll away. This game has a ton of trash talk in it as well. Thankfully, you have the option to at least tone it down or turn it off. You also have to call your own fouls in this game. That's right, if you get shoved to the ground, you have to press start and select call foul. What kind of bitch shit is this? Here, Roxy is just sliding around on her feet. I guess no one's gonna call a travel on a girl. It is also borderline impossible to even make a shot in this game. It's either the ball rims out or it just completely misses altogether. Besides the amusing camera angle around the basket, this game offers no entertainment at all. I challenge you to play this game for more than 10 minutes and not have the urge to blow your fucking brains out. Number 6. And now we're at that place in the countdown where games really start to get shitty. Here we have Rap Jam Volume 1, released January 1995 for the Super Nintendo. 
And don't worry, there's no volume two. Rap Jam has two game modes. We have Championship and Challenge. The whole gimmick of this game is to allow rap or hip hop artists to compete in a game of, well, basketball. We have people like Public Enemy, House of Pain, Warren G, LL Cool J, whoever Onyx is, Naughty by Nature, Queen Latifah. Queen Latifah? That's right, I shit you not, you can play as Queen Latifah. You can play 1v1, 2v2, or even 3v3, but I don't recommend that because 3 versus 3 is a bit of a clusterfuck. But on second thought, I don't recommend any mode in this game, so do as you wish. What I find really odd in the championship mode is the winner will appear in a rap music video? Aren't these already established artists? Oh, and you'll also receive $500 cash. $500 cash. In the mid 90s, I don't think any of these guys would even stand up for $500. Well, maybe Coolio. When you're loaded into the game, you're greeted with one of the most disgusting courts you've ever seen in your life. And wait, you're trying to tell me that's Queen Latifah? This game fucking sucks. For some reason, there's a three point line, but it doesn't matter where you shoot the ball on the court, it's always worth only two points. And this is hardly a basketball game, there's barely any rules. You can literally jump down the court like Super Mario with the ball, and not a single travel will be called. Double dribble? No problem, you can do that here on Rap Jam. Out of all the games we'll show you today, this one has some of the worst gameplay. I feel bad for anyone in the 90s who bought this game or let alone rented it. Besides the novelty of playing with your favorite rapper, this game offers you nothing. And why does this score have three digits? You really think you're gonna score 100 points or more in this game? Trying to score a basket in this game is like trying to pick a lock with your penis. It's goddamn horrible! Sometimes you'll go up for an uncontested dunk, perfectly timed, and it looks like the ball's going through, but no! No, it's not a dunk! It doesn't count! You don't release the ball for some reason! This is a perfect example of a company trying to cash in on popular names. The only problem is, they must have spent their entire budget trying to get these guys to sign on and had nothing left for the developers to actually program a fucking game! This sucks and I hate it! Number 5 Michael Jordan Chaos in the Windy City Released November 1994 for the Super Nintendo A basketball game starring the greatest basketball player of all time? What could go wrong? Well, first off, instead of a traditional basketball game, we were treated to a disgusting side-scroller. The plot of this story is pretty much the best part of this game. Michael is just warming up for an all-star charity game, when suddenly he finds out that his teammates have disappeared. It turns out that Michael's teammates, since they were too cheap to actually put their names in, had been captured by Dr. Max Cranium. To save them, he must meet Dr. Cranium at an Egyptian room in a museum. Once he goes to the museum, he is lured into an underground prison where the rest of his teammates are. Yeah, they're really stretching it here. You start off in some sunken ship with basketballs as a weapon. And not just one or two basketballs, no. You have unlimited basketballs you can throw. You got balls for days. You basically just walk around throwing basketballs at spiders, giant spiders, floating eyes, guys with basketball heads. And since they need to remind us that Michael Jordan is a basketball player, they've randomly put baskets and hoops around the game, where you have to jump up, dunk in it, and you get some sort of token. The graphics, they're not too bad for 1994. The controls, not the greatest, but not the worst either. The problem with this game is, what the fuck does it have to do with basketball? The product placement of the Gatorade bottles are scattered throughout the level, which Michael uses to gain back energy. I also find it kind of strange that Michael can only defend himself by throwing basketballs. I mean, the man is six foot six. In 1997, Nintendo Power ranked this as number seven in the worst video games of all time. And I also have a personal vendetta against this game. When I was 11 years old, I remember renting it because, well, I thought it was a basketball game. I mean, Michael Jordan was on the cover, but instead I was greeted by this pile of giraffe shit. 
And what's with the head animation here? I mean, it looks like part of his skull is showing. Is this some sort of zombie Michael Jordan? Nah, nah, wait. Let me fix it. Oh yeah, that looks much better. When you rescue one of your teammates, they just magically turn into a key. Is that BJ Armstrong? For the reason that many people rank this as one of the worst games ever, we had to put it into this list today. Unless you like to run around and randomly throw basketballs at zombies, I'd suggest not playing this. Number 4 Bill Lambeer's Combat Basketball released November 1991 for the Super Nintendo. The game starts off with some nice music. We're treated to an image of Bill Lambeer in some sort of armored suit. Wait, is that supposed to be Dennis Rodman? Once you leave the main screen, that will be the last time you see Bill in this game. That's because, other than the hovering basketball hoop, this game has nothing at all to do with the game of basketball. The object of this game is to put the giant beach ball into the basketball hoop. To get the ball back from the other team, as the title suggests, you can push, punch, and tackle your opponents. I guess that's why they chose Bill Lambeer to endorse it. Most of the time when you play this game, you'll find yourself just chasing the ball down the court. There's also power-ups that randomly appear across the court that you can use to blast your opponent. The controls are pretty basic, as there's really only two buttons. You can pass the ball to your teammates, which is also the same button as shooting, or you can tackle or shove an opponent, which is also the same button as well. When I saw the game was combat basketball, I thought this would be more of a basketball game where you could maybe do some dirty plays. But nope, this is some futuristic space game that takes place in the year 2030. Mind you, in the year 2030, Bill Lambeer would actually be 73 years old. The first thing you'll notice about this game is the god-awful graphics. I mean, it looks like some toddler drew it on a sidewalk with chalk. Apparently, this game is better if you, well, play it with a friend, but against the computer, it's absolutely horrendous. Also, the overhead camera angle they used in this game makes it really hard to see where your teammates are. I know there's a map in the bottom left corner, but it's so small you can barely make it out. There's not a whole lot I can say about Bill Lambeer's combat basketball, other than to avoid it, at all costs. Number 3 That's right, Shaq Fu, released 1994 for the Game Boy, Game Gear, Sega Genesis, and Super Nintendo. If you know anything about bad video games, then you already know the game Shaq Fu. Shaq Fu was supposed to be Electronic Arts' way to capitalize on the Mortal Kombat craze going on in the mid-90s. And what a better way to do that by using one of the most popular athletes at the time, Shaquille O'Neal. The only problem with that was, it failed miserably. The storyline for Shaq Fu is quite similar to Michael Jordan's Chaos in the Windy City. Shaq is on his way to a charity game, but instead he's sent back to the past to fight Egyptians. Yeah, that's right, fight Egyptians. I could go on and on about how bad the storyline is in this game, but to pretty much sum it up, Shaq stumbles into another dimension where he is forced to rescue a young boy named Nazu from the evil mummy Setra. What? This is hands down one of the worst fighting games ever released. The controls suck, the health bar is glitchy, and the game just looks like ass. This might also be the first time I've ever seen a world map in a fighting game. And you know a game is bad when there's a website dedicated to finding copies of this game just to destroy them. That's right, go to ShaqFu.com. In games like Street Fighter or Mortal Kombat, there are special moves you can use on your opponent. But in Shaq Fu, the special moves are limited, and when you try to do one, most of the time it's unresponsive or delayed by a few seconds. So you're just standing there waiting to get hit. I'll be honest, the music in the game isn't really that bad. The problem I have is the actual sounds of the game. Every time you throw a punch or a kick, it sounds like you're hitting them with a whip. It makes me want to shove a knife through my eardrums. The game's lack of control of your character will irritate even the most patient person. Besides Shaq looking like a total badass on the cover, this game will leave you frustrated and angry. 
Number two. What you gonna get? Slam City with Scotty Pippen, released November 1994 for the Sega CD. And yes, that's right, that is Scotty Pippen rapping in the intro. How could a game that starts off with Scotty Pippen spitting bars end up being so awful? Well, first off, it came out on the Sega CD. At the time, people thought this was going to be the future of video games. Thankfully, it fucking wasn't. Comparing this to today's standards, this is more of just a really shitty movie. But I want to dance. You're controlling a guy called Ace, and you're trying to get respect out of other basketball players by defeating them in one-on-one -on -one basketball. Nearly everything in this game is a video, and you can only decide what happens by, well, pressing the button at the right time. This game also offers some of the most cringe-worthy cutscenes I've ever seen in my life. I think you're the broad too long. It's because he's posing for pictures. Yeah, that's a great name. Fingers. Wonder how we got that one. And why is this girl's name Juice? You know what? I don't even want to know. It's almost insulting to even call this a game. It's more of just an interactive movie, if anything. Of course, as you can probably guess, the object is to defeat enough people, earn enough respect, to finally be able to play Scotty Pippen. Also, if you actually end up playing this piece of shit all the way to Scotty Pippen and defeat him, the look of defeat on his face is almost worth the price of this game. I never got a chance to play this as a kid, but I can only imagine the poor child that was given this piece of shit. This game is so bad, I don't even want to keep talking about it. Here, I'll just play a few clips. You're ball, Junior. Boy, I'm gonna drink you like milk. You want some of this? You got it. Yeah! That's what I'm talking about. That's what I'm talking about. My boy ain't that busy. That's why I gotta give my boy props. This is actually one of the better selling games on the Sega CD, but don't let that confuse you. This game fucking sucks. Number one. And the worst basketball video game goes to White Men Can't Jump, released in July 1995 for the Atari Jaguar. When you see the title of this game, you assume it has some association with the movie White Men Can't Jump, starring Wesley Snipes and Woody Harrelson. But no, they have absolutely nothing to do with it. Instead, you're left with players like Jules, Freaky, Van, Rio, Skin, Smack. Half of these names are street slang for drugs. I've seen generic names in video games before, but this is absolutely ridiculous. This game only has two modes, versus or tournament. I guess the only resemblance to the movie is that the entire game takes place in the Los Angeles area. The first thing you'll notice about this game is the camera angle. It goes up, it goes down, it shakes left and right. It's like the camera's being placed on a droid and being controlled by Stevie Wonder. The players on the court will also grow and shrink at the same time, which really starts to fuck with your eyes. Talk about fucking with your eyes, these catchphrases that keep coming on the screen don't go away. It's not enough that they're just insanely annoying, but they keep coming up. It's like a loop that never ends. The gameplay for this game is pretty much non-existent. The controls for this game don't even work. Half the time they don't even respond to what you press. Sometimes when you have the ball and you want to take a shot, it won't even let you. Like the button fails to respond to you pressing it. I also love how you can shove players to the ground and they basically die, then rise back up out of nowhere. This wasn't only just the worst basketball game, it was actually the worst game on the Atari Jaguar system. 
I will give this game credit though, it did have some revolutionary graphics for its time. But putting that aside, this game was basically unplayable. I can't talk about this anymore. I have a fucking migraine from playing all these shit games, and this is the cherry on top of the bullshit mountain! Just spending five minutes trying to play this game is enough to make your head spin. Thankfully for you, the Atari Jaguar is a pretty rare system, so you most likely will never have to play this game. I hope you guys enjoyed this top 10 list today. If you did, please like the video and click subscribe. Also, if there's any games you think I missed that should have been on this list, please leave it in the comments below. Guys, thank you for watching, and as always, keep your stick on the ice.